Hello, I'm Lloyd, and this is the Dressing Gown Diary. What a cracking uh, penultimate weekend of rugby we had, with victories for uh, Wales against Italy, for France against England, and of course Ireland closing in on another Grand Slam. Let's start with what the action in Dublin. It's a shame to see Scotland play like this. They couldn't execute simple two-on-ones. You had Hugh Jones break through the middle at 7-3 uh, down when uh, w with Hogg on his inside and he was unable to execute a simple pass. Scotland then flattered in the second half as Ireland up the pace, scored the tries, stopped out with another interception. This guy's really making a habit of it. And Ireland then looked comfortable. It's such a shame to see a Scottish team unable to execute those simple opportunities, which could have turned the game. And in the end, Ireland cantered through uh, and ended up winning the title with what happened after Paris game. England stepping into this. I did I did highlight this on the dressing gown diary last week that England had an opportunity to finish fourth. Now they could even finish fifth. What seems to be going wrong? Well, Eddie Jones hasn't worked out that the opposition don't just play the way you want them to play. Both Scotland and France counter-rucked aggressively after the ball and disrupted the way where England were playing. And England seemed to have no change-up, no way of dealing with that until late on in the second half where Farrell moved to 10 and suddenly the pace of play increased. But again, the opportunity for there was there for an England win late on with a five-on-one overlap in the last passage of play. Farrell screaming for the ball and goes tight, knock-on, turnover, game done and dusted. And that kind of is systematic of the way England played. I was also astounded at how flat-footed most of the players were. They were receiving the ball, standing still and getting knocked back by an aggressive French defence. It was as though they hadn't played rugby and all the mentality being, well, this is how we're going to play, so you have to do that. What? You're not doing that? That's not fair. Start complaining about things. It's a ridiculous situation. <coughs> And then the final game of the weekend, Wales put uh, Italy to the sword after some... It's a pretty, pretty disjointed game. Two tries in the first five minutes. You're thinking, wow, this is going to be a cricket score. Suddenly, I, uh, Italy found some form, played with a bit of uh, momentum, but not enough to trouble Wales. But certainly, it was quite an interesting game with Wales making 13 changes, developing the squad. Uh, and, and certainly great to see, I'm sure everyone in world rugby would have been pleased to see George North back to his best smashing through people and actually playing with some real aggression winning turnovers scoring two tries unlucky not to get the hat trick but uh, a great a great performance in the end by uh, by Wales securing uh, securing the points so this weekend it's all about what happens at Twickers but let's look look at the first game first Italy host uh, Scotland in search of their first win this season and actually they're on the back of 16-game um, losing streak. It's getting embarrassing for Italy. Scotland could, could secure a third win in the Six Nations, which they've only done twice before. So there's a lot on the line. Scotland will reflect. If they do beat Italy, it'll be a season that's gone forward. Uh, a shame... Uh, Two, two perhaps brutal losses in Cardiff and Dublin, but the home victory against against England will be reflected on well. Scotland have also only won six out of 47 games on the road, so they'll be hoping to add to that. But I think realistically, we're probably looking at a bonus point win for Scotland, which could move them up, up, up the table, certainly above England, if England can't find anything. The second game of the weekend... England closing in uh, or attempting to do what all the Celtic nations have done for years, stop the opposition, secure a grand slam. Have England really got enough? They've made some big changes, though, certainly in the halfback pairing, which I do like a bit more pace from Farrell and Wigglesworth in to start. Um, it, it, Mike Brown also drops down to the bench. So there's pace in the back line. I'm a big fan of Elliot Daly. I think he's a great rugby player. And Watson Shadley with the, with the uh, penalty try, which was a penalty try, uh, in at 15 but perhaps he's been exposed in his defensive work there's no question he's an elusive runner kick chase as well can do well but England will be looking to bounce back nothing less than a win is sufficient it could you know, England could finish fifth if, um, if it, it could even be on points difference because if France uh, France lose to Wales, but not by much. But England lose quite su significantly to uh, to Ireland. Even on points difference, England could drop down the table, which is a bit of a shocker. But hey-ho, who's worried about it? 
So England have now won 14 on the bounce at home. Um, Ireland have only, uh, the last victory at Twickenham was in 2010. They're 11 on the bounce as well, and they will look comfortably to close in on this Grand Slam. And I've got full confidence they'll be able to do it. It finishes off as well. The last game of the weekend it sees uh, a French team visit uh, uh, visit Cardiff. France... Um, Predictions were that they were going to finish fifth or sixth even. They've actually come together with a strong victory uh, against, well, firstly against Italy and clearly on the bounce of uh, beating England at home. But this also does show how hard it is to win away. The only team excluding Rome who've won away have been Ireland with a last minute drop goal against France. Everyone else has been pretty much pumped away from home. So it's been very, very difficult. But Wales have produ- picked a very, very strong team. I'm quite glad to see Dan Bigger back at 10. The back line, the back three are very, very strong with half penny. George North and um, Liam Williams and it it, it kind of shows the way Wales have developed if they're able to select um, basically a new team so they should be fresh so I fully expect Wales to comfortably beat the handicap you can get about eight points uh, on France so that's certainly worth an even money bet so that is Freddie's flutter for the weekend back Wales on the handicap minus eight and a half to take the victory but look this is the dressing gown diary this is Lloyd over and out love your weekend of, of three games it's a hard Saturday three back-to-back games so I do hope you get to watch as much as you can over and out